Right, so the hunting day has started. It's about seven o'clock. The sun's just come up. I just want to introduce you to Reese, who's going to be the professional hunter that's taking me out today. And the track has just arrived. So we're just having coffee now, but we're going to head off very, very soon, get straight into the bush, and hopefully come across something. Right now, there's no wind. Weather's really nice. Um, not too sunny, not too overcast. Looks like there's not going to be any rain. So I think we'll be in for a good time. Um, we just have to get out there and get started. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> The plan for today's hunt is to start up in the mountains where I'd shot a Nyala bull the previous time I was here. I prefer to hunt in areas with a bit of contour so that I can lie prone and shoot from an elevated position and I also prefer the spot and stalk type hunting where you're able to sit and glass for animals from one spot and plan your hunt as opposed to just stumbling upon something and having to take a rushed shot. I've always said that I'm more comfortable taking a shot from 500 meters where I've got time to set up than taking a shot from 50 meters when I don't have time. Actually, it's closer. What is it? It's to the top, it's 820. Yes. And 670 to the bottom. But you know, in, in this, in these conditions, like anything within 700 is dead. Because no one right now. This is very much a game of patience. When hunting in thick vegetation like this, the animals could be looking right at you. But if they don't want to be seen, you won't see them. You have to be alert, and you have to be willing to sit for a long time and just wait. We glass around for quite some time, but eventually we decide to move on to another spot. the hill and um, again we took our time glass through the valleys and we saw a whole herd of kudu um, but they're all kudu cows there were no bulls in the herd uh, I would really like to shoot a nice kudu bull that's one of my favorite animals but unfortunately no bulls in the herd so it's on we go we're gonna keep on walking there's still a lot of um, hills over here to glass so we're very optimistic about our chances we just got to keep moving Reese keeps watching the herd as they move up the hill and he spots a bull with really bad horns that he says needs to be culled. There's very little wind and the bull's within shooting distance, but we realized that it would have been very difficult to actually retrieve the animal after we had shot it, so we decide not to take the shot. So we had an opportunity there on a, a management kudu. Um, at first we only saw the kudu cows. But then we, a bull came out into the open and it was a bull that they actually wanted to get out. Um, the way management hunting works is on a property like this, um, you want to try to keep the gene pool strong. So you want to uh, leave the, the big kudu bulls until they're post mature and where they're kind of beyond breeding age. That's kind of the prime time to take them because they're not, their genetics are not um, then going into their offspring. Um, but if you've got a, a kudu, that's that's not of good genetics if the horns in this case the horns were very close together then you want to take the animal out so that the offspring don't become like that um, so we had an opportunity there that kudu was at about about 450 meters i was lining up on him but he moved into a bush and we just lost him from there because you know kudu it's called the gray ghost of africa they just disappear into bush and you very very difficult to find them and by the time we saw him again, he was at about 800 meters. And honestly, with his conditions as good as they are, I would have been comfortable taking an 800 meter shot. Um, there's literally no wind right now. So it's, it would just be a case of getting the correct, um, you know, density, altitude, temperature, um, the range, the incline angle, and then taking the shot. But um, unfortunately, there's no access path going up to the top of the mountain. So it would be a real waste to shoot it and then not be able to retrieve it. So we decided not to take the shot. But if there was an access road going up there, he could have been down. So, good start to the morning, I suppose. Yo. <laughs> That's why leathermen have pliers on them. <laughs> yeah, not to fix things to take out thorns. 
as it starts to warm up, we see quite a few animals coming out. We spot some Nyala, we see some Impala use, and suddenly, out of nowhere, a big Impala ram appears right at the top of the hill, and it's game on. There's very little time to set up for the shot, but thankfully my Kestrel takes real-time readings of conditions, so all I need to enter in is the distance and the wind, and it does the rest for me. And this all happens very, very quickly. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, that's yeah. well done. That's the scary thing about long range shooting. Well, it wasn't really, I don't know if I'd call this long range, but it's for hunting, it's very long range. If you're shooting gongs, it's, it's different because there's not that urgency to get a first shot impact. But for hunting, 500 meters is long range in my books. And um, what, what range do you say? 540? 540, 540 meters. 540 meters. Um, yeah, my heart's right now. Um, but yeah, the thing about the thing about hunting like this at long range is you take the shot and you don't hear whether you've hit it solid or not um, until like a couple of seconds later. So you know, we heard that thud, that's when I knew I'd hit it and then I could see it running running in the bush. I thought we were going to lose him and then I just saw him get a bit wheezy and fall down. So yeah, it's going to be a bit of a retrieval to get up there and bring him down, but I'm really happy with that. Nice Impala Ram sitting there nicely on the hill. And just for those of you wondering, it was kind of on the horizon, but this is a huge piece of private property and there's no one else on this whole farm. So in this case, I'm very comfortable taking a shot, but if you're in the US and you're hunting on public land, that's an entirely different story. You don't want to shoot on the horizon then. But yeah, this was a unique situation and used my Kestrel for the first time while hunting. Um, got this in the States a while ago and um, just takes all the conditions into account, it takes a live reading of the temperature, barometric pressure, density, altitude, all of that stuff. So yeah, really made my process of getting on that animal much easier and thankfully he stood broadside and gave us an opportunity to actually take our time. So really, really happy. Lacquer. Oh, <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> so you'll notice here my turrets aren't exactly dialed to 540 meters. Um, the, the reason for this is that when I made this turret tape, I made it for, my, for the conditions, the average conditions back home at the coast where I live. We had a slightly higher altitude here, so I'm not dialing as much as I would um, at down on the coast. But also, um, this doesn't take in, in the, the actual conditions at the time. So if I if I'm have to take a very rushed shot and I'm at home, I will use this tar these turret markers from scopestickers.com and I'll just dial straight to, the, straight to the range I need. But in this case, where you, you, you need to, um, well, you have time to take the shot, and when you're not at the same conditions, you, you can't actually rely on this. You've got to take the conditions into account and then dial for that. So that's what I, that's what I did this time. But it worked well. It's a pretty long track up the hill, but we find him quite easily right where we'd seen him go down, and I'm really happy to see that it was a good shot. Thank you, thank you. Right, well, the day could not have started any better. We had um, one or two, you could say, failed opportunities on uh, management uh, kudu bulls that just got away from us or just got a little bit too far away from us. But the opportunity came. It's still very, very early in the morning. We haven't even had breakfast yet. And we just spotted this Impala. In fact, the tracker spotted the Impala um, sitting right on top of this mountain. We were down in the valley and it gave us enough time to set up because it was fairly far away. So we found a good spot where I could lie prone, um, got all the measurements of the of, of the conditions. There's hardly any wind, so I dialed nothing for the wind. And um, yeah, got steady, pressed record on the scope cam, so hopefully we got the scope cam footage as well, and um, relaxed a bit and took the shot. And bullet impacted right here behind the, behind the front leg, perfect height, so it probably would have gone through lungs. I'm really happy with that, um, probably ran, I'm guessing, maybe 25 to 30 meters and then I, I saw him go down. So really, really happy, uh, 540 meters, really good start to the day. But we do have a lot of 
time left for this hunt. So we're going to take this animal back to the cold room, um, get it sorted out there so we can actually um, eat some of the meat tonight and um, yeah, head back out into the bush and see if we can get another animal. But fantastic start to the day. My 260 Remington has done its job once again and I'm really, really happy. With big smiles on all of our faces, we carry the Impala back to the truck, load him up and head to the cold room to go hang him up. We still have the whole day ahead of us and after a successful morning, we decide to take some time out at the lodge. Well, we've had a really good start to our hunting trip here at Thorndale Safari, um, but we've now taken the Impala to the cold room and we're in the middle of the heat of the day here and um, it gets pretty hot out here. So we're gonna take a few hours off um, just relax here at the lodge, cool ourselves off, and then at about 2 o'clock this afternoon, we're going to head out again and, and see if we can get something else down. Um, yeah, I, I, one of the favorite parts of, of being out here at Thorndale is, is the lodge. I, I really feel like I'm at home when I come here. Um, it's really relaxing. There's no um, people running around and rushing around. And this is one of my favorite parts of being out here is just relaxing at the lodge. Um, you know, so even when your mind's not on the hunting, you can still enjoy nature. You've got incredible panoramic views out here. You've got a nice swimming pool and you've got some really comfortable rooms. So uh, I'm really stoked to be out here, but we're going to relax a bit, maybe have a little swim in the pool or something for the next couple hours, have a, have a nap. Um, and then it's straight back out. Hopefully it'll be a bit cooler then by the time we head out because it is quite hot right now. But yeah, I think the weather conditions are perfect. So, you know, the animals, if, as long as the animals are out, I think we might have a, a really successful afternoon. But yeah, looking forward to that. When we head out again in the afternoon, we come across a variety of different species, but we specifically hoping to target either an ostrich, a springbuck or a diker. So we've got a herd of springbuck over there. It's like a bachelor herd of springbuck rams. There's a white springbuck amongst, amongst them, which kind of makes it really easy to spot them. It's a dead giveaway. And that's why you don't get white springbuck naturally occurring. They would have just been wiped out long ago. But um, yeah, we're gonna see if we can get close in there, see if there's a, a ram that we can shoot. Uh, should be good, but yeah, the wind's picking up a little bit now, which might actually work in our favor in terms of the hunting, because we can use the wind to our advantage. But in terms of shooting, we're gonna need to be careful if there's any longer shots that could be affected by the wind. We weren't expecting an easy opportunity on a springbuck ram so quickly, but one of the rams suddenly stops broadside and gives me an opportunity to set up quickly on the sticks. Yeah. Okay, 324 meters. I must say, first thing, before we even talk about the stalk or the spot or anything, these sticks are amazing. I would never, ever take a shot that far using a normal bipod, but this is quite a steady shot. I mean, I suppose the only downside is the fact that when you shoot, um, the recoil flips the muzzle up a little bit. So I may not have got that shot perfectly through the scope cam, but oh my word, that was fantastic. Well, wind's just starting to pick up now, but we managed to get on the springbuck just in time. I uh, took a shot from, I think it was like 325 meters or something um, off, this, off Reese's magical shooting sticks. Um, shot wasn't perfect, but he went down within a few meters, so I'm happy with that. That's what you want. You want to put the animal down with one shot. Um, and I'm really happy. Um, I'm, I'm very much a variety hunter, so I love to be able to hunt different species. Every different species has its own characteristic. Um, every different species is a little bit different to hunt. And, and this hunt was very, very different from the earlier hunt this morning where we shot that, um, that Impala. That was very much a hunt from long range where we had a bit of time to set up, um, up in the mountains. So the terrain was also different. This time it was 
you know, on this flat ground with animal like a springbuck, which is very skittish, loves to bolt off. And once they start running, very difficult to stop them. So, yep, all happened very quickly, but happy to get it down. And this is one of my favorite animals. Um, got a lot of character. If you, I don't know if you've seen springbuck jumping, where you see, they just take those big jumps, and that's why they're called springbuck. Also, the national animal of South Africa, our rugby team is named after them. And Reese just taught me an interesting fact. Um, the little mane at the back here um, that often stands up when a springbuck is shot, um, he, he told me to smell it. And I, I smelt it and it actually smells a bit like candy floss. So yeah, every animal is different. Every animal has its own unique characteristics and it's really great to get this down. So yeah, really happy. Um, Again, yeah, my rifle did its job perfectly. And I do want to thank Reese, who's been a fantastic PH, um, and, and Thorndale Safari for having me. I absolutely love this place. It really feels like a second home now. It's only the second time I've been here, but uh, I love the people here. I love the lodge. I love the whole atmosphere. And the hunting is fantastic as well. So yeah, really good to be back here. I'd really recommend this place to anyone who wants to come hunt in the Eastern Cape. They've got pretty much all the classic Eastern Cape animals. So it's good to be back here. But the day is still young. It's only about 3 p.m. or something like that. So we've still got a whole afternoon. So, yep, we're going to load this up, take into the cold room and see if we can maybe go out after something else. Let's do it. With another full day of hunting ahead of us and two good shots already done and dusted, we decide to call it a day there and head back to the lodge and just enjoy the sunset and relax at the fire. The mountain you're seeing here is called the Coxcomb. It's the highest mountain in the area and I have very fond memories of climbing up to the top when I was 11 years old and enjoying the same sunset and sunrise from a cave near the summit. So dinner tonight, we have a fillet from a kudu that was actually shot on this farm. And that's one of the nice things I suppose about um, having meals at a hunting lodge like this. You know that the, the, the place is completely self-sustainable. So a lot of the food that we eat here is actually uh, from this farm, which is fantastic. It means you don't have to rely on buying stuff elsewhere. Um, and this is what hunting is about. Hunting is about um, supplying ourselves with food, first and foremost, before the the trophies and the photos and the videos and, and all that stuff, the bragging rights. It's, it's about the food, that's what it was primarily about. So we're going to really enjoy this piece of meat tonight and hopefully by the end of tomorrow we'll have some more meat from hopefully something that, that I will shoot tomorrow. But yeah, we're going to try to get a good night, sleep tonight, get a good rest and hit it hard tomorrow, try to get something done. Mm -hmm. 